Thank you for coming to Ballroom A, main stage here at Rhode Island Comic Con. We're glad to have you. Hope you're having a great weekend. Are you having a great weekend? <laughs> Our main stage host. She has been on stage all weekend. She was here last year. We're grateful to have her back. You know her from Buffy the Vampire Slayer? You know her from Bring It On? She is the CEO of GeekNation.com. Ladies and gentlemen, Claire Kramer. Thank you, thank you. Are you guys having a good time? Was anybody here for the Stan Lee panel? Yeah. Dude, how, how kick-ass is he? 94 and still just going strong. Well, our next guest is equally as kick-ass. Not nearly, not nearly the same age, but equally as kick-ass. Anybody like Mr. Robot? <laughs> Me too. Please welcome to the stage, Christian Slater. Okay, thank you. Great. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Good to see you. Oh, the other mic? Okay, here you go. I mean, you, you can see? keep both of them, but it might yeah, be kind I, of a... I walked out here with a coffee. You asked me if I was coordinated enough to do that. Now yeah. you asked me to hand now the Now I'm mics. like, juggle the mics, I know. I mean, drink the coffee, not, and not sit down. Not a skill that I possess. So, All right. uh, welcome to Rhode Island. Thank you so much. Yeah, Rhode Island. Good I to be here. Beautiful. Yeah, I think yeah, I speak lovely. for everyone here that we're super stoked you're here. Well, thank you so much. Um, yes, thrilled to be here as well. Thank you. We're going to talk a lot about Mr. Robot, but I got to okay. ask you first, is this, you know, you're new to the convention scene a little right. bit. Right. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. What do you think? I love it. No, it's great. Uh, I love seeing everybody dressed up and I, I uh, honoring all these shows. I mean, look, I'm a, I'm a big, I don't know if I'm a comic geek, but I'm, I'm, you know, certainly a Star Wars, Star Trek fan, and uh, yeah. That's, a, that's allowed here. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I mean I, should I ask you uh, which you prefer? Uh, between those two? The Gosh, <laughs> it's, it's hard, it is hard, I don't, you know. I mean, we can save that question for the end of the panel, Yeah, if I you mean, want. a couple Halloweens ago, I know uh, my wife dressed up as a horror, and I dressed up as Kirk, and it was a great, great, great night. You, you reenacted that, that first kiss. It was fantastic. I was so happy that she was game, and, you know, we just went for it, and, you know, all those fantasies I had as a kid, you know. Oh, my God, I love it. I could see you as a captain. You can see that? I could see you Look as a... Look at me. I mean, I'm in the chair right now. I feel hey, like, he yeah. certainly is. All right, Scotty, so... <laughs> we need warp drive. We're all dead. <laughs> so next time I see a Captain Kirk walking around Comic-Con, I'm going to be like, Christian? Yeah, yeah, you confuse us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Mr. Robot, incredible show. You do such an amazing job with the character. Thank you. Um, when you, let's take it back. When you first got the, the pilot script um, and read it, what were your initial thoughts and how did you decide to sort of approach the role? And in that, how much about the role did you actually know at that initial uh, well, yeah, I'd gotten the pilot, and this was about three, maybe four days before they were actually going to start shooting. So it was very early on in the process, and I read it, and I had many questions about the character. I had some suspicions about, uh, you know, what the deal was with this guy, and I had a meeting with Sam Esmail and Chad Hamilton and Nils, the director, and um, I asked Sam what the deal was, and he said, do you really want to know? And I said, yes, and... Uh, he told me and then told me what the relationship was that my character has with Elliot and I, I just got very excited. I, I liked the fact that he was so uh, prepared. Uh, I'd met other show creators before and, you know, they, they really, some, you know, it, it's just nice when somebody has thought the whole thing through the way Sam has and uh, that made me feel very excited and very safe and, um, yeah, I thought it was certainly a unique way to go with uh, with this character. So, there you go. Absolutely. I mean, that actually brings up a good point. I feel like shows used to write for, like, an arc of, like, five seasons or, you know, a couple seasons. And now, a lot of times, you know, you hear that a show told their whole story in season one and then they get renewed and right. kind of change. How yeah. many seasons are planned out for Mr. Robot? Uh, well, Sam has always said it's between four and five seasons. Um uh, that's from what my understanding is uh, that that's always been his plan and that's what he's envisioned and uh, that's the entirety of the story that he would like to tell. I mean, I know one of the things he doesn't want to do is stay longer than, um, you know, because some sh sometimes shows will stay on for years and years and years and, and uh, you know, people get pretty sick of it. So I think he wants to just sort of, you know, hone in, get exactly what uh, 
his story is that he wants to tell and then, you know, get in and get out. I love that. Yeah. What do you think draws people to the show? Well, um, I think it's, uh, well, when I read the pilot, certainly it was a subject matter that I didn't know a great deal about. And it's a subject matter that, again, Sam Esmail has tackled in a very authentic way. So um, I think a lot of hackers and organizations, people like that, uh, Edward Snowden has certainly uh, said that it's one of his favorite shows because uh, it is extraordinarily authentic, and it, it's a, an incredibly timely subject matter. I mean, all the things that are going on in the world, and you know, all these hacks that are happening, and uh, this controversy with Russia, and this is everything that we're sort of doing and tackling with this show, and with the economy, and um, that that entire world is, is sort of mirroring and reflecting what's going on in our actual world. So, uh, and then on top of that. There's a very um, interesting, I think there's very interesting characters. You know, one of the things Sam again said is that as technical as the show is and as much as it is about that world, it's also about human beings and interacting and, um, uh, you know, Elliot's character. He's a guy who's isolated and lonely and uh, feeling disconnected and it's a lot, uh, a lot of that has to do with technology. So um, I think that's something that people relate to now. Absolutely, and what I love about it, and it's pretty much what you said, is it has this global feel to it with the hacking, but it's a, a very personal show, you know, right. and it's very character driven. Yeah, well, with Rami Malik, I mean, his performance, I think, is amazing. He's amazing. Yeah, come on, give it up for Rami, right? Yeah, I mean, the guys. Uh... But you're amazing too. Oh no, no. I, I, you know, I, I feel great about it. But uh, no, Rami is great. I mean, to to get to play. You know, uh, a, a character of his, uh, you know, a figment of his imagination is, uh, is is a lot of fun. I mean, the fact he's really the main guy that I work with in the show. So uh, fortunately, he and I get along extraordinarily well. How much does his choices with Elliot affect your um, your sort of portrayal on an episode to episode or week to week basis? Well, uh, I mean, I've always said I'm, I'm as real as Elliot ha imagines me to be. So um, I never really look at it as though I'm this mysterious, ghost-like, you know, spooky kind of character. I, I always uh, approach it as though we're just, you know, two guys in a scene together. And, um, and he has always been so convincing and, and uh, made it so believable and has really helped to create the chemistry and dynamic between these two characters uh, beautifully. And... I was certainly curious after episode nine, season one, you know, how, where Sam was going to go with the Mr. Robot character. I mean, there was a moment where I asked him, I said, you know, how am I going to come back after this? I mean, we've just seen us at the graveyard and uh, discovered, you know, who, it, who, it, who and what I am. Um, and, uh, you know, Sam, again, surprised me and, and shocked me and then you know, gave me that great speech at Times Square uh, to give, and, uh, and I think he's handled it all very well in season two. Absolutely. Has being a part of a show like this um, changed your view on technology? Uh, well, it certainly raised my levels of uh, awareness of this particular world. Uh, it's it's uh, certainly made me uh, more cautious about things that uh, you put out there on the internet because once it is out there, it's out there forever. So you really want to be uh, careful about those kinds of choices that you're making. Uh, and you also want to update your passwords, of course, as much as possible and uh, as regularly as possible. Um, and you want to put a piece of tape over your camera. That's uh, not no joke. I mean, I could... I could do it. I, this I'm is, telling you. This uh, is like your I've own learned little... some real skills here. I mean, I could see into each and every one of your homes if I wanted to. Um, yeah, yeah. For oh, reals? yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's uh, it's definitely a very serious and very scary world. So so uh, it's nice to have the technical advisors that we do have on the, on this show to kind of guide us through it all. That's really, yeah, that's interesting and scary. And that was your own little PSA for yeah, it is. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> technology safety by yeah, Christian. It got me about my kids, too. I mean, one of the, you know, you just think about, I mean, it's hard even for me now at my age to practice good judgment all the time on the Internet. You know, I mean, you get, uh, we've been given the keys to the kingdom, you know. I mean, we're exposed to so much on the Internet and... and you know, some of that's great, some of that's scary and bad and, and a little dangerous. So um, as a result of being involved with this show, uh, one of the guys that we work with, Cora Donna, who's 
the real technical expert. Um, he introduced me to some of these software things that you can download. And, you know, keep an eye on what your kids are doing, uh, which is important. With their consent, of course, with them having the knowledge, you know, it's not like I'm big brother or anything. I, mean, I just want them to know that at least until they're 18, you know, either myself or my wife, you know, will be monitoring yeah, to, yeah. what the heck's going on. So just watch your step. <laughs> That's good. Well, if uh, you guys right. would like to, yeah. yeah, if you guys would like to ask Christian some questions, you can line up cool. um, in the aisles. We'll open it up. And oh, while cool. they get themselves organized, Christian, I'm Great. curious. What? You have such an iconic career and you've played so many amazing roles. What role are you most recognized for? Um, probably Clarence and True Romance, I think. Is, uh, yeah. I think so, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, we'll start over here. How are you, sir? Good, right. thank you. All right. Hi. I've seen, probably, if I haven't seen everything you've ever done, it's been pretty close. Okay. Um, you're one of those people that, if you're in it, I'll buy a ticket without knowing much else about it. Thanks, I, man. I enjoy your work. Sorry about Alone in the Dark. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, who's our actor, writer, director, somebody that you have that for, where if they're, if they're involved in the project, you want to see it? Hmm. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I really like Matthew Vaughn as a director, you know, right? Matthew Vaughn is great. I, I love him from uh, all of his movies, Layer Cake, and uh, I thought that was a cool movie, and what he's done with the Kingsman, I think, is really great. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's all these guys, Martin Scorsese and Spielberg, of course, and uh, uh, so yeah, um, those, those are the guys that I would buy tickets for. It's what comes to mind right now. All right, thank you. Good thank question. You. Thanks, man. Yeah, great question. Hi, we'll right. go over here now. Okay. Hi, um, I was wondering if you can compare what it was like working on a character like Steven from Cobra King, King Cobra, yeah. um, who is a real person versus someone that you kind of build from scratch. Wow, uh, yeah, great, great question. Um, well, that was certainly uh, an interesting experience for me. I don't know if any, how many people have actually seen King Cobra, but uh, it's all about the you know, uh, adult male uh, porn industry. <laughs> uh, and uh, James Franco presented me with that project and uh, it certainly gave me the opportunity to do something that I was uh, uh, scared to do. Um, and I guess those are the sorts of things that I'm kind of looking to do now in the future. Um, uh, so that was, yeah, challenging and exciting and fun. And yeah, look, when there's, when there's more information, of course, to work with and... Uh, uh, Dateline episodes and, and books you can research and find discover things about the character. Of course, that's all extraordinarily helpful. Um, I, I don't have a particular preference. Uh, I, I love creating characters from scratch, as uh, I think we kind of did with Mr. Robot. And uh, but playing a guy from real life, having having that sort of information to work from is extraordinarily helpful as well. Thank you. Thank and you. On on that note, it, there must be like a sense of responsibility when you're creating a character based on an actual person. Oh yeah, to, no, you want to do it uh, as authentically as possible, even if he was a guy working in the gay porn industry, you know what I mean? He <laughs> still is a human being and, you know, lived a life and uh, there's no kids in here, right? Uh, maybe there's a couple. Uh, all right, so uh, in the Mickey Mouse industry, yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Hi, how are you? Hi. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Very good. Okay, I'm going to try to get through this. I had to write down. Cause wow. I, okay. So you were in an episode of Entourage. Oh, yeah. 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 So <laughs> Somebody likes Entourage. Oh, my. It was a great, great scene. Yeah. It was very brief. Yeah. Was there a backstory or a personal story that went along with your... Um, <sighs> interaction with the drama? Uh, you know, it is a good question. Um, I... I the, the only reason that came together is because I was shooting another show uh, on the same lot with those guys, and the producer saw me and was like, hey, do you want to just do a walk on here? And uh, I said, yes, of course. But at the time, yeah, I was shooting this show called Breaking In, and it was on the Sony lot. Thanks, yeah. And, um, and I was very excited because I was a huge Entourage fan, and I, I loved all those guys, and I still think they're great. Um, so yeah, I, I thought just to have a moment there um, and who knows, if they ever do a sequel to Entourage and we get into the depth and journey of what the hell that story was, why I 
what did I do? I gave yeah, he, drama the he, finger yeah, or something? He was, he was pretty sad when you... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know really what uh, they had in mind there, but for some reason he and I were just, you know, combatants. Yeah, he was He was very confused Yeah, well, yeah, he seemed, so. yeah, like, what the heck, is, what's his problem? I don't know, yeah, yeah. All right, thank I you so know. much. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Hi. Hi, Mr. Slater, how are hey, you? sir, call me Christian, please. Christian. Hey, I want to take you back a little way, go back a few years uh, right. to a little uh, movie that you did called Pump Up the Volume. All right. I'll have to go that. back to that. A two-part question. Does the message of Pump Up the Volume, is it still relevant today? And does the world and our PC climate need a little Harry Hart on here? A little Happy Harry. Yes. Yeah, There's still a place for that. Yeah, no, I... I um, uh, I th I'm really proud of that movie, of course. Uh, I love that character. That was certainly an uh, extraordinarily special time. I do feel like it was uh, ahead of its time in, in a lot of respects. Um, I know Sam Esmail is a huge fan of that movie. and, and is, I've heard people refer to Mr. Robot, Mr. Robot as sort of a, a pump of the volume for this generation. You know, I mean, Back then, of course, the technology that I had to work with was a ham radio and uh, you know, I was just trying to deal with a corrupt school, and Mr. Robot's, that whole world is obviously to the next level, um, and dealing with much uh, greater and uh, larger issues. But yeah, I mean, look, the, the relevance of that and uh, the passion and the anarchist quality, uh, I think, is, is, is vital and important. Um, but also, I think, you know, it had a lot of heart, you know, and, and soul, and, and, uh, I mean, that, that was a character that wasn't, he wasn't racist, you know, he wasn't judgmental. I mean, he was maybe judgmental of like the bullies, you know, and, right. uh, and those guys that were picking on the other guys that were kind of maybe a little different. Um, so yeah, I think we need more voices like that out there that, uh, uh, you know, will we'll stand up for, for, for those guys that are, that, are, that are a little different. Thank you very much. Sure, man. Thank, Thank you. you. And great movie. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Christian. How hey, you dude. Doing? Good. Um, first, you must be a bigger Star Trek fan because you had a cameo in Star Trek VI. Right. Yep, boom. Yep. And then, um, second, how much fun was it working on The Wizard? Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. it's one of the first movies that I can remember, kind of like, almost like raising autism awareness. Uh -huh. So oh. um, I thought there was many dynamics to it. Okay. And maybe if you could speak to it a little bit. Yeah, well, the Star Trek VI thing, the undiscovered country. Um, I was working on this movie called Cuffs. Like this was nineteen ninety. Awesome movie. Thanks That's so much. Breaking the fourth wall like Deadpool. Yeah, yeah, and Ferris Bueller and doing the whole thing. Yep, yeah, yep. I love that. That was really fun. And I had my little sort of Beverly Hills Cop Eddie Murphy theme. You know, yep, yep. That we tried to rip off there. It was incredible. Great movie. Uh, uh, but yeah, so I think I had like a couple days off there, and an actor had dropped out, and my mother was the casting director of Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. Wow. So she called me up and was like, hey, do you want to come put on this Captain Kirk uniform from uh, Star Trek II and, and uh, fill in for this, for this uh, particular role? So that's how that worked out. Um, and I was, I think I was probably the most nervous I've ever been in my entire life. Like, wow. in that, I was like such a starstruck geek. I mean, I was out of my mind. I, I couldn't like speak to Sulu. I was, I was just, I mean, you can see it on my face, I think, you know, when, when I see it. I, I just am like horrified to be in there. Um, uh, but I still love it and it's a cherished memory. And I can't remember what the second part of the question was. What? Oh, about the wizard. And, oh, yeah. And you know, a movie about video games and yeah. possibly autism awareness. Yeah. No, I mean, the wizard I thought was um, a really charming movie. I mean, it was Fred Savage and... Uh, you know, that was a big deal. We had the power glove. It's so bad. Yes, pretty badass stuff that we were working with. And um, I mean, the, yeah, the, the kid, I, I, I guess that movie Rain Man had just been made, Dustin Hoffman. So this was sort of the kid version of, of that in a certain, certain respect. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, I, mean, I had a great time with Bo Bridges and I, I loved working on the Universal lot back then. We, you know, they gave us permission to sort of run around and get on all those rides, which is something that I had always fantasized about from when I was a kid going there. So uh, that's a great thing about this business sometimes is they give you like the key to get behind the scenes and sort of, you know, just go nuts and have a, have a great time. So I, I enjoy that. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, well, I don't want to say, do you have a favorite 
character? Because I know, you know, as an artist, you're probably connected to all of them and to some extent, but do you have a project that is like, over the years stands out as being really special for one reason or another? Well, no, I mean, I think the, the Harry Hard on Happy Harry character uh, definitely is uh, the one that, that I have always loved and uh, always responded to. But then there's, you know, I mean, JD from Heathers is certainly... <laughs> Fa favorite movie ever. Thanks like, so much. Top, like, yeah. favorite movie ever. I must have watched that movie, sorry, but I must have watched that movie like 30 times when it came out. Yeah. I, and I had the VHS tape putting it in. Yeah, I know. God, those days. Um, but yeah, no, that one is, he's definitely a real badass character. That was, that he's was really, amazing. Yeah, that was different and unique and uh, certainly another thing that was ahead of its time. And of course, Winona Ryder is the best way ahead of its time. You were way, way amazing. Thank you. All right. Yes. Hi. Um, I absolutely love your... Society outfit? Or? Okay, yes. good. Yeah, Thank on. you. Um, I absolutely love your work on the show. Thank um, you. Finally, this season, we finally got to see um, Rami and you have like a heart-to-heart -heart moment. Yeah. Um, do you think there'll be more of that in season three? I think so. I mean, um, I know that we didn't end necessarily on the best note. Um, so I am curious to see where Sam is going to go with that and uh, how the rest of that relationship is going to unfold. I, I mean, he's described it to me a little bit as though there's, it's definitely going to be combative, you know, and I think you know, I'm going to be wanting to take over a little bit more because I just keep getting more and more frustrated with what, you know, the choices that Elliot's making. They're, they're driving me crazy. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hey, dude. Uh, congrats on the Golden Globe for starters. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you very much. <laughs> That was a good night. That worked yeah. out. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm a set designer here in New England, and I just worked with Matt Munn, who was your designer on the pilot for Mr. Robot. Oh, cool. Yeah. So my question is, how chaotic is it filming on location in New York, and what's your favorite built set you guys got? Uh, I mean, well, uh, filming in New York is great. I, I loved it. Um, I mean... There was no guarantee when we started the show, uh, certainly from the pilot, that it was going to stay in New York. Um, I mean, USA didn't commit to that, uh, but Sam made New York such a character in the show and used the backdrop of New York so beautifully and so well that I think they had no choice but to uh, keep it there. And man, I'm, I'm just so thrilled for that. You know, I mean, nothing can really double the subways of Manhattan. You know, I mean, if you go to... Toronto's great, and I love it, and I've worked there, and it's beautiful, but, you know, there's just such a uh, rawness and, and authenticity to the subways, and, and just New York in general, it's just such a great, amazing city, and, and I live there, I'm a native New Yorker, born and raised there, so um, to get to work there and live there at the same time and work on a show like Mr. Robot, it's, it's just the best, and I think, yeah, going to Coney Island, uh, those sets, and... Yep. What they did in the arcade I thought was great, and um, yeah, he's a certainly talented set designer. There's yeah. no, no doubt about it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you man. And good luck to you. Yeah, good luck, dude. Yeah. Hey, how are you? All right. Good. How are you? I'm good. So my questions were already answered, so I'm, oh, thinking, sorry. I'm trying to think of another one. Okay. Heathers. Let's yeah. go back to Heathers. Why not? Yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah. Sure. I mean, that was definitely the best. Cool. The best, best, best. Thank so you. How, did you, how did you feel... Like making that movie, like what was, what were you, what, did, what kind of, what did you have to get into to? And I'm gonna add something. Yeah, what sure. did you think when you read that script? Because it was so ahead right? of its time. It was yeah. so like crazy. Were you, were you yeah. thinking? You know, what were you thinking? What and you played I the think? best psycho. I gotta say. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Um, what was I thinking? Yeah, you know, it was, um, it was definitely one where, uh, you know, I read the script and I thought, yeah, okay, it's, it's pretty cool. I don't know if anybody will ever be into this or watch it or who knows you know I mean you never know like how people are going to respond to anything and um but I knew I liked Winona a lot uh I know my mother read the script and she demanded that I not do it <laughs> she was like no there's no way you're, no way you can't do this um but you know I rebelled and you know went against her wishes and I did it um yeah, sure, sure, sure. Awesome. And it was it was a great experience. Uh, making it, uh, yeah, working with Winona was great. Uh, uh, doing all those scenes. Uh, uh, I mean, just the scene in the cafeteria when the two jock bullies come over to me and it was like, hey, you know. Yeah, and that scene is just so 
you can't do that scene in today, of course, it's done. But, um, but back then, uh, it was, yeah, again, ahead of its time. And, and uh, I had just a pretty badass opening line there, you know? Seemed to have an open door policy for assholes, though, don't they? That <laughs> yeah, was badass. Yes. So. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, we'll go over here. Okay. Hi. Um, I've never seen any of your movies before, ever. <laughs> um, <laughs> So why are you standing at the mic? Because awesome. Which movie of yours would you recommend? Are you neat? You're like my wife. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Which movie of yours would you recommend me seeing first? Heather's. Yeah, is that what you would say? Yeah, I don't know. Ask these guys. Start. Uh, start early. Yeah. All of that. Hard Rain's pretty good. What's your what? yeah. Young Guns too. Yeah, Arkansas Dave, Robin Hood. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Fuck me, he cleared it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> in all my lines, I wrote these things. Yeah. Okay, thank, right, you. thank you. Yeah, dude. Yes. Hello. Welcome, welcome to our world. Yeah. Right. Hi. Um, I'd like to say, really love your work. Uh, my mom knows you from Heather's. I know you from Mr. Robot. Cool. I was wondering, what was your favorite episode to film? Of Mr. Robot. Yes. Huh. Uh, well, look, uh, uh, certainly there were s some great ones in season one that I, I really loved. Like, doing the, the speech in Times Square was great, and uh, I thought the writing was great for that particular scene. And, and uh, yeah, it was exciting and challenging, and it was fun to prepare for that one. And I would go to Times Square different odd times because it's such a distracting place, and I had so much to say that I just wanted to like be there and, and um, absorb myself. and. So when it came to the time of shooting that particular scene, I wouldn't be thrown off. Um, but then in this last season, there were also a lot of fun moments, but I think the clear cut, obvious winner is uh, Alf, you know, I mean, the uh, episode five, yeah, the sitcom episode I thought was really fun. And, uh, you know, working with uh, such an icon as Alf. Um, <laughs> This is not something that I ever thought I would ever say in my life. Uh, was, New things happen all the time. Yeah, I mean, that's the great thing about this business. You know, you just never know. And uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. But I think that episode had a lot, you know, it had that crazy, twisted sitcom opening. And then I also loved at the end the scene between me and young Elliot. I thought that was really special. Thank you. That was actually my favorite episode, too. So. Oh, great. I was cool. going to ask if you had a favorite episode. Right. So. That was mine. So. All right. Awesome. Nailed it. Thanks. So you guys are like, you yeah, know. we're simpatico. You're on the same, like, page yeah, here. That's yes. Cool. Hi. Thanks, How are you? Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit to the role reversal dynamic between JD and his father and Heather's. I thought that was really interesting, and I was wondering oh, yeah. how you thought that affected the character. Huh. Um, that's right. I mean, that was a fascinating relationship like the dad was sort of like the kid he yeah that was like yeah it was twisted it was parenting the parents <laughs> yeah a little bit yeah um you know i mean that's uh, some parents are really messed up uh, <laughs> uh, uh you know i mean uh, yeah it's that's that's definitely fascinating i mean that whole dynamic and that whole relationship between those two was certainly twisted. I think it certainly lent to JD's, you know, frustrations and wanting, you know, obviously he was not being given any boundaries, you know. I mean, he was being raised by basically... Free reign. Free yeah. reign, yeah. I mean, he was being raised by wolves. So he was going to act out and, and that was going to uh, express itself in, in the way that it ended up expressing itself, which was, you know, utter chaos, you know. But <laughs> chaos is what killed the dinosaurs. <laughs> Whenever I, I'm at a loss, I just quote something I said in a movie. And I, I love it. I can get my way right out of it. It's perfect. But thank I did love that relationship. I really did. Yeah, thank, thank you, so, you much. so much. Thank you, yeah. Thank you. Hi. Hi, my hey, name is Nathan, and I'm going to go to Mr. Robot. Okay. Um, on the night after the episode where the speech happened and, you know, the great hack and all that, I remember going to school the next day mm. and seeing a kid walk by with the F Society mask, wow. seeing a sticker on the wall and everything, and that was my moment where I went, wow, this is becoming something big. Yeah. I was wondering when that happened for you and what was your reaction? Huh. Huh, huh. That's a good question. When yeah. did you realize like the fan base was more than uh, maybe yeah. you first thought? Well, I guess you know maybe it was like not this Halloween, but last Halloween. I think was um, uh, well, that was the first time that I ever saw anybody like dress up as 
Mr. Robot or El and Elliot, you know. Um, uh, so that was, uh, that was, I was like, what, really? They were dressing up as, I thought that was great. You know, I was really excited and jazzed about that. I mean, um, yeah, there've been like a few moments in my life where I got pretty excited. The first moment was uh, when I got my Robin Hood action figure. Uh, you know, when, when they made yes. a, yeah, when they made a little Will Scarlet doll, I was like, holy moly, my, that's it, I'm done. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, the next exciting moment was when I saw people dressing up as Mr. Robot. I thought that was great. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. You're one of my idols. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Thank Ple you. Pleasure. Thanks, man. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Hi. My name's Veronica. I just oh, wanted to Veronica, ask... Veronica, yeah. Hi. Right. I just wanted to ask, what was your favorite scene to shoot in True Romance? Well, um, favorite scene to shoot in True Romance. Uh, wow. There's a lot of scenes. Um... I think probably the one with uh, Gary Oldman and uh, just that fight scene, you know, where, where I come in and get the, the luggage, the drugs and uh, that whole battle scene and working with Gary Oldman and swinging the lamp back and forth between us uh, was uh, pretty exciting, pretty fun to shoot. I remember that. Yeah, that was fun. Thank you. Yeah, Thank, right. you. Thank you. Good question. Hi. Greetings and salutations. Uh, hey. Um, I just wanted to know... Um, your character and Elliot's character in Mr. Robot are so on opposite ends most of the time. They're yeah. always battling. Do you think there's ever going to be a point where they're going to actually be on the same side to do the same thing and not have that dynamic? I, I, That's I, an interesting question. Yeah. I, you know, it's going to come down to what Sam Esmail decides to do with the character. I, I you know, I don't know. Uh, I remember reading the second episode for season one and, you know, pushing Elliot off of the thing, the pier or, at Coney Island, and I was just like, dude, why do you want me to do that? I, I, I don't want to do that. And I felt really bad about it. And, and um, uh, so, so I, yeah, I would ideally like to work out the relationship between the two of us. You know, I don't think, you know, getting rid of Mr. Robot necessarily means that Elliot is well, you know? No, I, I think they have an interesting chemistry and a fan, fascinating dynamic and, you know, so hopefully at some point they will work out their differences and, uh, you know, find some mutual harmony. I think, oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was going to say, yeah. I, f I feel like they will. You do? You to feel like come that? together, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I hope so. I hope so, too. But well, we'll see what you. happens. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, hi. All right. Hi, Christian. Hey, dude. Um, I, I graduated from college with a bachelor's degree in acting. Okay. And uh, pretty much my question for you is more... Um, when you're preparing for an audition, when you're in that room, when the feeling of being a dime a dozen, I guess, like, is on you, how do you uh, thwart that? How do you start getting ready for the character and just get all of that behind you and dive in despite the opposition or the imposition? Uh, well, I, I lie to myself a lot. <laughs> what I do, uh, I mean, you know, uh, we all have anxiety, we all have fears. Um, you know, there's that saying, of course, feel the fear and do it anyway. Um, but, you know, also I, I try and, and channel the nerves and, and trick myself into thinking that it's more excitement, you know. And, and then I, I sort of try to use that fear as, as like just like that flame within me to, to um, you know, create whatever energy it is or, or, you know, project whatever aura it is that I'm supposed to be projecting when I'm in that meeting or having that audition. Uh, so, yeah, so I just try to hone it, you know, but I grew up in New York and, again, like I said, my mother was a casting director and, and I spent a lot of time um, hanging out in her office and watching actors come in and audition for things and, and then sitting in there sort of quietly in the corner playing with my action figures and eavesdropping and listening to what the producers would say about the actors. And <laughs> so that was sort of like interesting training ground for, for, for me, you know, to, to maybe, you know, just not take it so seriously. And, and, uh, and also, you know, what other people think about me is, is really none of my business, you know? Well, Definitely. Yeah, so there you go. Cool. Right. I just want to say quickly, we're from New York City, and uh, that's my girlfriend. Hey. When we get married, we're going to get Clarence and Alabama tattoos. So. Wow. Dude. Just nice. wanted to let you know. You have my blessing. <laughs> Thanks, man. You're Thank awesome. You. Thank hey, you so and, much. And good luck to you. Thank we'll you. watch out for you. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? You know, I'm an ordained minister now. I, I, I joined, <laughs> yeah, I joined the uh, Dudist priesthood. I, you know, like the Big Lebowski. 
friend of mine told me you can do that online. So I was like, yeah, I'll be a dude as priest. That's I'm gonna, awesome. I'm going to be a minister. Right? Yeah. Sure. Love it. Yeah, the dude abides. I mean, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know. Yeah, cool. Cool. <laughs> All right. Hi. Yes, um, hi. I have two things. First, I wanted to say that my senior quote was, one morning I woke up and realized I'd never be normal. Uh-huh. Um, and then I wanted to ask you, I've been watching you on Live with Kelly a lot. Oh, yeah. Any, uh, <laughs> nice, yeah. any chances that it'll become a permanent gig? Hey, uh, you know, I think it, it comes down to, uh, boy, it's, it's really interesting, that whole uh, adventure. I love doing it. It's great. She's amazing. And, and uh, if, if that were something that, you know, were to come together, that would be great. I think I'd have to ask permission um, from, you know, my other... Life? Well, no, my wife would be totally cool with it. It's, it's more my, my other wife, uh, Sam Esmail, you know, my, my boss um, uh, that I work with now. So, um, but look, if, if, uh, if he were cool with it, I would be more than happy to start my morning with you guys every day. I mean, come on, why not? Yeah. I would love it. It's, I just did it um, a, a thing for, well, yeah, you'll see. But yeah, you'll see. Okay. Can't tell you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hi. All right. Hey there. So you, you just kind of made my day when you said, fuck that. He cleared it. Oh, um, yeah. I got something to show Claire if you wanted to just take that up there. She probably hasn't oh, seen it. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Is that, that the know, action figure? Is, yeah, this is it. I was going to actually have you sign it. Oh, yeah. Cool. Um, I'll do that. I also, with my Lando covers in figure, but whatever. Um, I was actually more excited to see you than Lando. But anyway. Was Lando here? For Lando's what? here. Yeah. Lando's now, here. Now, what do you mean? Billy Chris? Or Billy? Billy, Billy, Billy D. Billy, yeah. Billy D. Yeah, Billy D. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, my, come my on. question for you is so oh, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's Will Scarlet. Yeah, you, you know, you know, you've made it when yeah. you're a two-inch plastic come figure. Come on, that's it. Uh, right? I, yeah. So I was like deal. a ten-year-old kid in the first Christian Slater movie. Hold on. Hold, on. Movie. Oh, sorry. hold the mic a little further away. Sorry. Oh yeah. Is that, is that better? <laughs> that's really okay, sound sorry great. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, I was like ten years old and I saw Robin and Prince of Thieves in the theater when I was a kid. Yep. In Pittsburgh and like just blown away. That was my first movie that that I saw you in oh, cool. and uh, just loved it and become a you know, big Thanks, fan ever man. since. Thanks. Um, and I guess my question to you is, um, uh, what's your favorite um, memory being on set of uh, Robin Prince of Thieves? Because I, I just love the genre and I, and I love the film and I love your performance in it. And just, Thanks. It's a, obviously a fun film. So, right. You know. It is fun. Yeah. No, it was definitely... I didn't know really at the time like what a great adventure and uh, it was just thrilling. I mean, first of all, we, we shot it in Sherwood Forest, which was unbelievable. I mean, that there actually is, is a real Sherwood Forest and we were there and, you know, we were doing Robin Hood and, um, <laughs> I mean, gosh, the whole experience is crazy. The, the, oh, it just popped into my mind, the cod pieces. I just remember, <laughs> sorry, it's so inappropriate, but, you know, we were all so competitive at that time about whose cod piece was, you know, bigger. <laughs> um, it's just ludicrous, that, that memory. Um, but on the mature side, of course, uh, working with uh, Alan Rickman was great. Yeah. Uh, God rest his soul. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was a big deal. I mean, to get to do some scenes with uh, an actor like him was was thrilling and um, uh, very, very, very special. And yeah, it was great, great loss. Um, so I love that. And look, working with Morgan Freeman, of course, was amazing. Uh, yeah, great, fantastic, Morgan Freeman. Um, yeah, I've been very lucky and very blessed uh, to uh, to have some of those experiences in my life. Certainly, thank you. Sweet. Thank and you. would you ever consider doing a sequel? Uh, well, I think they're doing a new Robin Hood. Actually, um, Rami told me that he went into audition for Will Scarlet. Uh, yeah, wouldn't that be weird, right? If he he played Will Scarlet in some Robin Hood movie? That'd be amazing. That would be amazing. I don't think uh, he's going to do Freddie Mercury instead, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll so, be amazing uh, too. I think that'll be equally as, as fascinating and interesting. Yeah. Well, thank yes. you so much. We're thank certainly you. worth having a drink over with him. With cool, man. Thank Thanks. you. And you Thanks. look great, by the way. Yeah, you do look I'm awesome. Stark. I don't know if <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. So good. Yeah. We like the House of Starks. Yeah. Yes. Hey. Hi. A uh, big fan, huge fan, have been since I was a kid. Thank you. Um, All right. And yeah, I haven't <laughs> seen any walkouts here, so that's good. All right. uh, my, the first movie I ever saw of yours was Heather uh-huh. again. Yep. Um, and my question to you, and it has been for a long time, like playing somebody who is so psychologically disturbed, yeah. did that affect you negatively um, in the long run? or And well, how did that feel? Well, this is deep now. I mean, now we're getting into the therapeutic <laughs> section of this. 
Uh, well, uh, I mean, that was, uh, look, it was fun, you know. I mean, I think uh, part of uh, one of the aspects of this business that I do love is that, uh, you know, with some of those characters, you do get the opportunity to exercise a lot of those demons, you know. I mean, it's fun to dress up and uh, escape into those worlds and, and um, you know, lose yourself in, in those types of characters and do things uh, in movies uh, that you otherwise, you know, could get in a lot of trouble for. <laughs> so, um, so it's fun to sort of channel it in that direction. I mean, I'm getting the opportunity to do that with uh, Mr. Robot, and um, you know, I think like we all do it. We're doing it here, you know. I mean, I realize it's like to to dress up and and lose yourself in those characters. It's a healthy way to sort of channel a lot of that. Um, uh, behavior, and that's what it's been for me. You know, I mean, I get to step into the shoes of other people, and um, it does uh, it helps me out psychologically. I think to to get that opportunity, because yeah, in real life and in this world, you do have to kind of learn what your boundaries are and what works for you, and um, and you know that can certainly be certainly be challenging. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Suspension and disbelief runs both ways. Art yeah. is created so audiences can come and, yeah. you know, escapism and also for actors. It's right. a, you know, yeah. it's an escape. It's a healthy so. outlet for yes. sure. Definitely. And Thank he didn't retain any of the evil. I'll just answer that part of your question. <laughs> no, I could see that. She's sensing that. that. Yes. I could see that. <laughs> Thank you very He's much. He's a good person. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We have time for one more question on each oh. side. Oh, wow. So okay. All we'll right. We'll go over it's here. Ping pong here. Yeah. Hi, Christian. Hey, dude. Um, I have a question. A very decent question, I guess. All right. When you were a little kid, yep. um, did you want to be what you are to mm. this day as a little kid, or did you want to be, did you want to be something else? Well, uh, that's a good question. I mean, look, when I was a little, little kid, um, you know, I certainly, I don't know, I was going to be like a spaceman or, you know, one of those types of deals, um, fireman. Uh, but then I also did have... A dad who was in show business, and uh, I remember when I was like five years old, he would have to leave to go to the theater, and I would sort of cling to his leg and say, "Dad, please take me." And um, and he he did. He would take me to you know backstage at the show that he was working on, and I could sit there in the wings and and watch him perform, and it uh, it looked like fun. You know, I mean, there's no doubt about it. It was like, oh man, look at this, and the audience is great, and they're all laughing. And fun and you know he's playing a fun character and uh, I think it just sort of downloaded into my brain as something that yeah looked like fun um, and it has uh, remained fun uh, I think I have uh, continued to learn and evolve and grow and uh, I, I've imitated and I've customized and I've learned to kind of uh, make things my own and um, been very grateful for the entire journey, the ups and the lows and the whole whole ride, but very happy to be where I am today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And last but not least, how are you? Um, yeah, hi. Hi. Um, so first of all, I was wondering if you could say hello to my friends Phaedra and Michelle. Phaedra and Michelle. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Phaedra and Michelle. Okay. How are okay. you? Um, and Greetings and all, salutations. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, Heather's is my favorite movie ever, and yeah. all of us are in love with Heather's the Musical, and I oh, want yeah. to know what you thought of that, because that's just an amazing musical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I did go to New York. Uh, well, I live, you know, I live in New York, and I went and saw it off-Broadway, and uh, I loved it. I loved it. I did love it. It just was really frustrating to see somebody else do JD. That was the only thing. I was just like, what? And you're the best JD. So. Oh, thanks yeah. so much. Yeah. yeah. Obviously. I was like, Come on, what's that guy doing? So, it was... no, so, so it was hard for me to stay in my seat and not run up there. I think that would have been uh, that would have been fun. But but yeah, no, I loved it. And I thought it was adorable. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. It was an unexpected musical choice. Yeah, unexpected. Well, a, sometimes you know, those are yeah, the way to go. The unexpected. Un you know? Unexpected. Or the so, extreme. The extreme. Yes, the extreme. Right. Did right. you guys enjoy this hour with Christian? Thank you. You can ah. go see him back downstairs. Christian, thank you so much. I can keep this doll. I can keep, is this for me? I can keep this, dude? No. No, you want me to sign it. No, 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 I'll sign it. I'll sign it. I got a whole box of these. I'm he kind of does want to keep <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you can pick All it up right. backstage. Christian Thank you so Swiggle! much. Thank you.